for food with a board be a quality mark so you can relax and enjoy it more. Many restaurants and cafes have sprung up recently to satisfy our appetite for healthier food, and in particular, healthy fast food. Sprout & Co was founded in 2015 by two brothers in their early 20s, Jack and Theo Kerwin, and now they have six restaurants in Dublin. Jack, I'm always interested in meeting people and finding out how did they get into the food industry. Tell me about yourself. I took a job as a chef and after about three, three or four months of working, I quickly realised I needed some formal training. So um, the people I was working for at the time sent me down to Ballymaloo. I was down there sort of learned from scratch everything from uh, about ingredients, about how to cook things, about loads of ideas. But what I was really sort of taken by while I was there was the sort of farm to plate concepts. You started off with the juices, was it first of all? Yeah, so I had a great opportunity um, because of, of Oka to um, open up a small juice bar within their Rathcool store. I started out on my own trying to come up with juices that were using Irish ingredients um, like beetroot or carrot or kale and spinach and that type of thing. And then we moved on to trying to create a cold press juice retail product that we sold throughout Dublin and Wicklow. What does cold press mean? So so cold press is a different way of juicing whereby you extract juice from uh, a produce uh, without using heat. So the whole idea is that the nutrients don't break down as much. You get more benefit from the juice. People really like the taste and when they benefit the body, it's very good too, you know. So after the juice bar, what happened? I'd always sort of wanted to go back to cooking itself. Um, we had a great opportunity to open on uh, Dawson Street in Dublin. The whole idea came from that sort of, the thought process of being in Ballymaloo, working with Irish ingredients and really seeing the difference from using really fresh, good quality stuff. And I wanted to try and find a way to create healthy food that was uh, centered around using in-season Irish ingredients. So the menu changes every three months. Tell me about the menu now. We're just coming into autumn and our menu is actually changing tomorrow. We have uh, a new salad called the Smashing Pumpkin, for example, that's coming out. <laughs> it, man. Uh, so we're using Irish pumpkin uh, with some Irish bacon, with some roasted balsamic uh, Irish onions. So every season, the core idea is we take what's in season, you know, something like pumpkin, and we build a salad around that. And I see on the menu you have like your signature salad. Three signature salads that if we took off, we'd be killed. The super guacamole is uh, our probably our most popular. And what's in that? It's a great salad. I mean, the guacamole sort of acts as the protein on it, um, but we've got sort of Irish ca carrot, uh, Irish red cabbage. We have a mixture of like McCormick's greens. We've got some baby kale, spinach, some rocket, and then we've got quinoa, feta, roasted butter and squash, mix seeds, pomegranate as well. And I notice you do wraps too. We basically just take one of our salad concepts, put it into a wrap. So I mean, a really popular one is the falafel. Uh, so we make all our falafel from scratch using lots of different ingredients in it for flavor. At the moment, we've kind of got a tomato and red pepper pesto in it, a tzatziki, uh, some roasted peppers, some pickled peppers, loads of Irish green, burst of flavor, it's delicious. So how many outlets do you have under the sprout? Five at the moment, um, and we're just about to open our sixth store. So it's been a busy two years. And all in Dublin? Four of them at the moment are in Dublin, around the city, and then we've one out in Dunboyne, which is officially me. Like I noticed when I came here earlier on, it, the place was buzzing yeah, yeah. with people. You, you know. do notice that so much more people are eating this way. And it's really exciting for us as a business because with it going in that direction it means that it's opening up to more people. It's not just your typical salad eater. I think that is reflective of society and how people are really interested in eating healthier and also interested in hearing the story behind where their food came from as well. You know, so that's I think there is this perception that healthy food can be bland and insipid, sure. but what I had today was full of flavour. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. delicious. You feel good eating it and you yeah, enjoy yeah. it and yeah. you say it's light, it's nourishing. I grew up eating salads, so I've always loved them. and. Uh, for me, I always thought, God, no, there is so much flavor you can get across them if you do things right and you know, if you really fresh ingredients. So I hope anyway, we've created salads that people find you know, they really enjoy as opposed to just eating them because they're healthy, you know. Yeah. Sprout is very innovative, not alone with their food, but I see you have an app too yeah. where people can order. We find a huge amount of orders are coming through the app. People are very busy these days, they don't have to queue. It gives people who are incredibly busy and don't have five minutes even to wait for their food, they can come and collect it. Um, and there's also delivery services now and stuff. So every Sprout & Co restaurant has their own chef? That's something we've been sort of emphasized from day one. We've always taken on really great chefs. So all our ingredients are prepped uh, first thing in the morning. We roast all our meats off, we boil our falafels and cook them off. When I came here earlier on, 
it had a real kind of American feel to it, like the brick wall, Manhattan kind of feel. Where did the concept come from? There's a few businesses in the States that I really admired. The idea and the logo is, it's obviously called Sprout, but the O is a beetroot, and the idea was the beetroot pretty much grows here uh, 12 months of the year. This is an old boathouse, and uh, when we came in here, we were trying to do actually as little as possible because, as you can see, it's pretty beautiful. And, you know, <laughs> just to keep it simple and let the ingredients uh, jump out. So One of the quirky ideas we had was putting in this indoor greenhouse uh, so above, up which, there. <laughs> which also acts as a storage cupboard. But we feel very lucky to have such a beautiful space and it's being open plan as well creates great atmosphere. Well, I have to say it's a fantastic concept. And how many people do you employ? We've 70 at the moment and the next one a few more. But yeah, In two years? Nice. Yeah, it's been crazy. One of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks Keep up the great work, Jack. Thanks, Evan. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Diwali is the Hindu festival of lights, celebrated every year in October. The exact date varies according to the Hindu calendar. The festival celebrates the victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and hope over despair. On Diwali night, people dress up in new clothes or their best outfits, light lamps and candles inside and outside their home, and pray to Lakshmi, the goddess of fertility and prosperity. Sunil has invited me to his house to share the Diwali feast with his wife, Lena, and their son, Isham. It's an honor to be here, and I'm fascinated to see what's been cooked. The array of food is incredible. Just we have plenty first. of options, uh, Nevin. We have kidney beans, mm -hmm. we call it rajma. Pilau rice, cumin pilau. Then we have uh, yogurt, which is a raita. This is made of ground flour pearls. It's called bundi raita. We have a few pickles. Homemade, That's of course. Homemade, Lena, and then she has her special green chili pickle. She loves chilies. I love chilies. Is, is yeah. that spicy? Spicy enough. Yes. <laughs> for me, yes. Maybe not for yes. you. Yes, yes, it is. You can start with the rice. Okay. And have a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And maybe one Just puri. Just spoonful of this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is traditional rajma and chawal. Like rajma and chawal. And if you go with. to my town, and on the streets, you'll find a lot of carts serving rajma chawal. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So rajma chawal is rice and. Yeah. Do you serve any of the yogurt with this? Yeah? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. 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 Perfect. It goes really well with it. Yes, the puri is the made puris. of whole wheat flour. Do you use knife and fork? No. We don't, fork? No. but you no. can if you like to. Try it. Just... Try it without it. Without, okay. Yes. So just mix, if you mix don't, it up, you just use this to help you. Okay. Yeah. Your You'll senses are on your fingertips. Like people's perception about Indian food is spicy. Not because of only the chili part. These are spices. Like clove has a bit of a kick. That's if true. You eat one clove. And ginger. Ginger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Black pepper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People think it's always the chili. The yes. chili you know, nice. when hot, yeah. If you go to the table and people say, you know what? This is the first time I'm eating Indian food. Is it very spicy? I <laughs> always tell them, yeah, oh. it is spicy, but not because of chili. Yeah. Because of spices. So what's in this bowl here, Sunny? That's a chana masala or a chickpea curry. You might as well try it with the samosa. And there's potato in here as well. Potatoes and green peas is the stuffing. Gwalior will have a little spicier one. Agra will have a little milder one. Stuffing remains same, potatoes and green peas. But the levels of spice goes up and down. So what about some of the sweet items here? Today is a big day, so we have plenty of different, different options. We have laddus, we have gulab jamuns, we have barfi, which is made of milk, balushai. We made in pickle yesterday, I think. That's what made us uh, self-rising flour. Guys, it's been absolutely a pleasure being in your home celebrating this very special day with you all. It is our pleasure to have you. No, absolutely. it's a privilege. Thank you. It was such a nice evening spending time with Sonny and his family celebrating Diwali. And for me as a chef, I have huge respect for cultures and their tradition, and more importantly for me, their food. So I'm keeping the vegetarian theme going through here. I'm gonna make a lovely aubergine and potato and cauliflower damzak. On a dry pan, first of all, cinnamon stick. We have some whole cloves, yellow mustard seed, and then we have some cumin. And we're gonna to toast this. It releases the natural flavors and the natural oils from these spices. Now, while they're on toasting, grate my ginger. Two cloves of garlic is gonna go in here. Crush them onto the plate. So that's the two cloves of garlic. And then one large onion, finely diced. Before I put all these in, a little bit of oil. Just a drizzle. You'll hear them crackling even more now. Give them one final stir. Cloves are a very strong spice, so that's why you only need four whole cloves. In goes the base for this. I'm not really looking for color. I'm just going to put the lid on just for a minute. What I'm looking for is just, just to soften it a little bit. The next stage of this is actually very easy. Um, some red lentils, which we have here. 
we have some tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, and then coconut cream. So what coconut cream is, is just saved coconut milk. It's thicker, it's richer, and it's really beautiful. Lovely in a rice pudding. If you make rice pudding at home, try it with a little bit of lemon zest. Spices, we have a little bit of chili powder. We have a little bit of coriander and cumin, turmeric, and then we have some sweet paprika. So with the spices, buy small and buy often. Now let's have a little look. In goes our spices and you'll find this might catch the back of your throat, so just be careful. We need to just cook these off just for a minute, especially with the chili powder. So this is very fragrant. It's spicy, but it's not a hot spicy. It's aromatic is the best way to describe it. So you can see the way I've kind of scraped the base of the pan. So a nice heavy base pan. So our tomatoes go in and then the lentils. And like this is gonna cook between now and the end about 40, 45 minutes. So the lentils kind of disappear a little bit. Stir that through. So that's the base. And then the coconut cream. So just bring this over here. Stir this through. And then some vegetable stock. So I have this in the jug. We're just gonna pour this right in here. So this looks very, very watery at the minute, but we need to put in our vegetables. So I'll do the aubergine first. When you're cutting aubergine, just keep it flat like this and then cut it in three. So just chop this nice and chunky. Put it into the actual pot and then we're gonna put our potatoes in. So I've already them diced. So I'm just using roosters. Again, nice big chunks because they need to cook out and I don't want them breaking up or going mushy. So I'm just gonna scoop this all in here. We're gonna stir this through. So this needs to come to the boil. Give it 20, 25 minutes, and then we're gonna add the cauliflower in. So this is what it looks like after 20 minutes. It's reduced down. Add in the cauliflower, and these are the cauliflower florets, and then stir them through. So the lid goes back on, and they're gonna take another, roughly about maybe 10 minutes. So the final stage of the Danzac is just finishing with baby spinach. So we've let the cauliflower cook, the spinach is washed, a little bit of salt and pepper. And this is a great dish because you can make this well ahead. I've seen recipes, there's loads of recipes for this, but some of them with lamb. You can pick like a shoulder of lamb, but it obviously needs to cook for a little bit longer. You'd put your vegetables in much later. So to serve with this, I've cooked a rice pilaf, and it's one of my favorite ways of cooking rice. What you do is dice a red onion. You can use a regular onion. You soften that with a little bit of oil, some basmati rice into a dish like this, some stock, good hot oven about 200 degrees for about 12 minutes. Then what happens when it's cooked? You stir in some butter, you stir in some herbs, and that's what it's there. It's lovely, it's fragrant, it's really moist. So I'm gonna serve this up. I'm just gonna simply just put a nice big spoon of this. And this is the lovely way, if you make a korma, any curry dish, this is a great way of cooking rice. So just simply spoon this first of all. Look at the color. That's from the turmeric and all those fantastic spices. And then just to finish it, fresh coriander. Probably serve this with a little bit of naan bread. And I think that is a really delicious and tasty vegetarian dish. That's my potato cauliflower and aubergine Danzac. Always look for food with a board B quality mark so you can relax and enjoy it more.